this is everyone's been criticizing Martinelli, but sometimes we forget that. Listen, Martinelli didn't have someone of a passer on that side. Um, Saka and Odegaard most of the season, but Ma Martinelli didn't have a passer to cut to cut through. In this video, I'm going to talk about a special player that we've been linked with, and for me. I'm, I'll be happy with this player. I'll be so happy if we got him because it's some something that we need. Um, it's, it's, it's a skill set that we need. It's a type of player that we need that we've been missing for the last um, season or so. Um, I would say we've been missing a player like this in our team. And it will push us to be more competitive with Man City and Rodri Miffy. Because right now, Rodri is the best centre mid in the world. We just saw him one um, player of the tournament for Spain. He's been... Um, the best player and the best sentiment for a while now. I know it's, it's kind of subjective when it comes down to La Liga, when you talk about Madrid, when, when you talk about Kroos, um, Kroos th 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 there's a lot of players that that's, um, may will be in the ring um, as the best sentiment in the world. However, when it comes down to the Prem and for this Euro, we realise that, listen, is no argument about it. Rodri has been the best. He's even won the trophy. So, this player, I believe, um, will help us to be more competitive with City's midfield. And I'm going to get into the reasons why. But make sure you tune in to the, um, watch the entire video because I'm going to also do some... Uh, we're going to watch a, a video of him and we're also going to look at some analysis to, to see, uh, better understand what I'm talking about. When he come, I'm going to be comparing him to Xhaka. I'm going to be comparing with Thomas Partey. With Roger, obviously, which was the last one. So make sure you stay tuned. Um, as well as... Um, it was another player, Declan Rice. I'm going to compare it to Declan Rice as well because if we get him, they're going to be, be playing as a two, um, potentially. So let's get into the video now. So as we can see, Thomas Partey, three years older, um, is is taller than Thomas Partey. Um, don't worry about the market value because he's got one year left on his contract. Marino's got one year left on his contract, um, so he's, he's going to be fairly cheap. So and as well as he wants to leave, so don't worry about the the the, the market value is actually cheaper than thomas b right, right, right now perhaps now when you take that when you take a look at uh, where he plays now you can see thomas party plays on the right and he plays on the left which is another interesting fact and i will tell you why um in the in the next comparison player now he play, even though um thomas party only played 13, 14 games compared to marino's um 32 we're talking about percentages so when you come down and take a look at something like now uh, for example what I want to highlight about this guy mostly are a few areas, but looking so far, we see that he's better than Thomas Partey and everything. Now, Thomas Partey, when it comes down to interception, Thomas Partey get a 0.8 on average. So it's an average in the um, in the total matches he played. It's, it doesn't matter. He could have played five matches compared to a million matches. It's the average. Um, so we see that Thomas Partey beat him in interception and, and he's, he's been driven past less time. Thomas Partey, you know he's got the octopus legs. But apart from that, like literally, literally, um, lost position, Thomas Partey lost less position, um, less fouls, um, yellow cards. That's about it. Everything else, Marino is on top. Everything else. Um, which is um, not something not to take lightly. As I said, the key area I want to focus on is the other pair game, which is successful dribble, ground duels one, and aerial duels one. Now, when you come on the ground duels, Marino once again on top. When you, that's a big gap as well. Ground duels 4.9 compared to 2.1. That's a massive gap. Over double uh, Marino's uh, ground duels um, compared to Thomas Partey. Um, when you take a look at a percentage, one as well is 52 compared to Thomas Partey, um, 53. Um, aerial duels, um, there's a lot. He always looks like he loves a bit of aerial duel and it, 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 it suits him because he's tall and he's playing in the centre. Um, his aerial duel is 5.3 and average per match. Um, one, which is an average of a percentage of 60%. Um, percent. On the other hand, Thomas Partey is 0.5 and that's a percentage rating of 46. So this this is the area I want to focus on because what I realise is that Arteta is finding someone to help Brecon Rice and help Odegaard to beat Manchester uh, uh, um, City's um, sentiment, which is Kevin De Bruyne, which is, uh, he hasn't got long left. So um, City's going to need to do something on that front. But you've got Kevin De Bruyne, you've got Rodri. And sometimes you got um, Bernardo Silva before you had David Silva. So the, uh, sometimes before they had um, Fernandino, you had Gondogan. So City's sentiment has always got this um, fluidity. It's always got this partnership. It's always got this, I would say, um, um, ideal balance in terms of chemistry, in terms of attack and defense and balance. Everything is just have a perfect balance. Um, all the players that Pep has bring into City so far. 
and this is what I think that Arteta is trying to compete with because let's take a look into Xhaka. Let's take a look into Xhaka. Now, when you take a look at Xhaka now, Xhaka is the same as Thomas Partey, 31 years old and the same height. Um, so now look at the position of him and Xhaka uh, in comparison. Now, so Xhaka has been fluid. Look at Xhaka's um, season last season. He's been fluid all over the pitch for Bayern Leverkusen last season. However, when he's playing for us, it's slightly different when he was playing for us. Look at the position he picks up when he's playing for us, right? This was the position. And it's the same position you see Marina play. So I see Marina as an upgraded version of Xhaka. And, and I know we all thought it was Kai Havertz. And perhaps even Arteta believed that Kai Havertz would be suited for that role. But we see that Kai Havertz is excelling now and in, 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 in is a striker position. So we still need a cover in that position. Declan Rice came in, but he didn't came in as a, 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 a Xhaka replacement. It looks like it. It looks like he came in as a player that we need in the midfield regardless of if we had party if we had Xhaka it looks like we would have got Declan Rice anyways so we still need someone that can play the Xhaka role because Declan Rice is not the best pass of the ball Thomas Partey most of the time is injured so when when Thomas Partey is injured Georgina covers and he's a very good passer as well but I believe that Xhaka on that left peg can open up the game on the left hand side because look this is everyone's been criticizing Martinelli, but sometimes we forget that. Listen, Martinelli didn't have someone of a passer on that side. Um, Saka had Odegaard most of the season, but Ma Martinelli didn't have a passer to cut to cut through, um, create some passing lanes that are in the um, getting behind on that side. Declan Rice done the best he can, but he's not left footed to be putting through certain passes that a left footed passer would be able to do. And I believe that this is what Jaka had to the team when Jaka was um, last season, Jaka played for us, which was his best season in Arsenal share. That's the position Jaka picked up. He was playing the same position Rice played, but however, he was um, integrating, he was teaming up with uh, Martinelli on that left hand side. Sometimes you see him on the, on the outside of Martinelli, playing on the byline and Martinelli come drift inside and playing his position. So he was perfect with Martinelli. And I believe that this is why sometimes we're not getting the best of Martinelli. But if we get someone like Marino, I believe that Martinelli will once again shine. And all these um, criticism that we once had of Martinelli, it will just fade away. I, be, we, I really believe so. Now, now, once again, as I told you about the area that I, I want to talk about, the successful dribble, ground jewels, Aerial jewels. One of the things that we, what everyone said about Xhaka is a brilliant player. However, when he's under pressure, sometimes he doesn't know what to do. It's like he, he's a he's a deer in the headlights. He doesn't. He kicks the ball away. He fumbles, right? And when you take a look at his stats, you can understand why. It's look. Marino doubled the average of Xhaka in terms of successful dribble. Uh, he almost well double the ground jewels. Uh, more than double the aerial jewels. So we were criticizing Jacker that he looks slow, he turns slow, he, he just looks slow in midfield. He slows down our midfield for a long time, um, even on the winger. He slows down our midfield. But the last season, as I, as I said, was his best season. Everything become quicker. Now, when you take a look at his stats, even for that last season, when everything was quicker, the best season he's had for Arsenal, when everything was quicker and everything was better for him, he still was below par when it compared to Marino. Now, we can all have this little debate about, oh, La Liga is easier than um, Premier League and all this and all that. Now, let's compare him in Bung um, Liga because I believe, I know that we believe that La Liga is bigger than Bungles Liga in terms of, uh, or even a harder competition. I know we all believe that. Um, or most of us. Now, let's let's take a look at the Bungles Liga, Xhaka and Bungles Liga. Straight off the bat, as well, I'm saying that, look, he's playing all over the pitch, right? Now, come down to the same thing that we were talking about. <laughs> Successful dribble, ground duels, aerial duels. Once again, same thing, lacking. This time, he's closer, successful dribble is closer to, to Marina, but it's still far, almost still double. Ground duels, it's the same, um, almost double. Aerial duels, it's, it's even worse because uh, uh, Vasto was one, but now it's 0. 0.8. So, Marino has a unique quality which most of the best midfielder because Xhaka was one of the best midfielder last in the world last season in the world last season right we should just compare him with Thomas Partey Thomas Partey was one of the best midfielder for Atletico and if he had been fit for Arsenal he would have been with a, one of the best in the world with Arsenal now let's take a look at another comparison let's compare him with Declan Rice so we know the age gap Declan Rice is three years older than him they're both the same height which is a good thing it's, it's a nice thing to see um, look at the position now. Declan Rice is everywhere, right? And this is a, a benefit which he can play on the right and Marino can play on the left because we, we see that it's Marino's best position when you talk, look on the heat map. And the right-hand side, obviously, is Declan Rice's best position because he's right-footed. And also, the, the heat map shows a bit more action over that direction. But when look once again, we take a look at everything else. Declan Rice comes out on top. Everything, everything, literally everything. 
apart from tackles and clearances. But when you come down to the same thing, successful dribble, Declan Rice lacks um, compared to uh, Marino um, uh, quite a bit as well. Um, when you take a look at ground jewels, Declan Rice, ground jewels lack when it comes to that compared to Marino. Can you believe that Declan Rice, one of the best tackle uh, ball winners in England, is pale in comparison to Marino? Like literally, 3.1 compared to 4.9. Now, aerial jewels again, once again, Declan Rice on one, an average, a match. Marino is at 5.3, so he's a good player in the air. Now, now that's another bone equivalent that would be neatly for next season because this season that just went, we were the best in set pieces. Now, Marino having this aerial jewel, 5.3%, that shows you that he loves a bit of um, um, aerial challenge. Him in the box, whether defending or attacking, it's going to be a benefit. It's going to be a bonus for us. Another two player, um, 188 centimeters, the same at Declan Rice. Dec we see Declan Rice scored about two, two. I remember two goals last season by Edda. One of them I remember vividly. I think one of them was against Luton, I believe. Um, that last minute win, I believe, against Luton at Luton's home. Declan Rice pops up with a, um, some good Edda's last season. So did um, Gabriel Magalhães. So. Getting a player like this, that's um, good good aerial juice. Comparing to Declan Rice, Declan Rice scored about one or two goals, Edders, and he's got a better aerial deal than Declan Rice. You know what's going to happen next season. I'm telling you, if we get Marino, it's going to be benefit. These three positions I'm looking at, successful dribble, ground jewels, aerial jewels. Now, let's take a look at another player. Now, the last player we're not comparing with is Roger. Now, look at Roger's map. He's like, he's an animal. He's everywhere. And... Looks at, look at the attacking mid. He's mostly in that attacking areas because City normally dominate teams in the attacking area, in their attacking area, in the opponent's half. They sit the uh, opponents in the half for the entire match, most matches. And this is why you will see Rodri in um, heat map like this. And look at his, his stats. Eight, right? As I said before, right now he's the best sentiment in the world. Um, everything, literally everything Rodri is better than him. Everything, at, when it come down now, once again. So... There's a few things now. He, he's better than Roger in the crosses, crosses, which that shows you that he's comfortable to go down the byline, which doesn't show, looks like Roger is. Roger likes to stay in the centre. Interception, Roger is better. But when it comes down to tackles, he's better than Roger in tackles um, in, in for last season. When you take a look at dribbles pass, he's been dribbles pass less than Roger, which is shocking. Yes, I know, because they're both Spaniards, bear in mind. They both were playing in, 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 in uh, Euro. Um, so the clearances is better than Roger clearances. Block shot, Roger um, comes out on top. Um, now, when it comes, the thing that I was comparing last in, in with the other players, look at this now. Successful dribble, Roger comes out on top, um, one point two at the seven point um, seven seventy five percent av um, average w um, win rate. Successful dribble. Now, yes, Roger won, but look how close this is. Bear in mind, he's closer to Roger than Declan Rice. He's closer to Roger than Thomas Partey, on average, even though he didn't play a lot of ma um, matches last season. He's closer to Roger than who else was it? Than Jaka. Jaka was like one of the best centre mid in the world last season. He's been closer to Jaka. Dribbling, successful dribbling. So that shows you that he's a good ball carrier. As I said before, that City has always been blessed with good ball carriers in the centre of mid. Gundogan, um, De Bruyne, Roger, uh, Fernandino, uh, even um, um, Silva, Bernardo Silva. Um, so much David Silva. They've been blessed with a platter of. Um, um, sentiment that can good carriers of the ball, and we see Foden as well. He's like an hybrid of everything, he does that as well. So, for we need a player like this to bring us to the next level, and this is what I believe that Arteta is doing. You see that, listen, we're short in this area, which is um, a ground jewel. Now, talk about ground jewels. We see Marina beats Declan Rice in ground jewels, Marina beats everyone in ground jewels, including Rodri. Marina also beats him in aerial jewels as well. For a big player like Rodri, his aerial jewels on average one is 1.6. And the 70% that shows you that it doesn't go in for a lot of aerial balls. And that another thing could, could could be that City don't normally play a lot of, a lot of aerial balls over the top, especially to Rodri. Normally Edison is direct with where he wants to pass the ball. Um so this is what I believe is in Arteta's mind. Get a player like Marino to fill that gap of the ground duels in midfield, the aerial duels in midfield. Declan Rice is good, but he can't do everything. And as well as he's a good pass of the ball as well. And we're going to see that in the clip when we're watching it. So tune in 